Boudicca was the queen of the British Iceni or Iceni tribe, who led an uprising against the conquering Roman forces in AD 60 or 61. The Iceni were from an area of the country known as Norfolk, the same area that we originate from. Boudicca's husband, Prasuticus, ruled as an independent ally of Rome. The Iceni were, therefore, an independent tribe. When he died, he left his kingdom jointly to his daughters and to the Roman Emperor in his will. However, his will was ignored, the kingdom was annexed and his property taken. Boudicca was flogged and her two daughters raped. The estates of the leading Iceni men were confiscated. Furthermore, at this time, loans that were given to the Britons by the Roman rulers were recalled. Money that was loaned to the Britons was also confiscated. Roman historian Cassius Deo described Boudicca as being very tall and most terrifying in appearance. She had tawny hair hanging down to below her waist, a harsh voice and a piercing glare. He writes that she habitually wore a large golden necklace known as a talk, a colourful tunic and a thick cloak fastened by a brooch. Boudicca sought the support of the Trinovantes in modern-day Essex in fighting against Roman rule. She stressed to them how much better their life was before the Roman occupation and how wealth could not be enjoyed under slavery. She placed the blame upon herself for not expelling the Romans as they had done when Julius Caesar previously came to their land. In AD 60 or 61, when the Roman governor Gaius Suetonius Paulinus was campaigning on the island of Mona, which is modern-day Anglesey, on the northwest coast of Wales, Boudicca led the Iceni, the Trinovantes and various others in revolt. They firstly targeted Camulogenum, which at the time was a settlement for retired Roman soldiers and the site of a temple to the former Emperor Claudius. These Romans had been brutally treating the local population, and so this made it an ideal target. Boudicca's army destroyed the city and took the decapitated head of the bronze statue of the Emperor Nero as a trophy. Boudicca and her large army then moved on to attack Londinium, which is now known as London. Suetonius rushed to defend the settlement, but was outnumbered, so was forced to retreat. The city of Verulamium, which is modern-day St Albans, was next to be destroyed by the rebel army. Between 70 and 80,000 people are said to have been killed in the fighting of these three settlements. Roman historian and senator Tacitus says the Britons had no interest in taking or selling prisoners, only in slaughter by gibbet and fire. It is estimated that between 70 and 80,000 Romans and Britons were killed during these three battles, many by torture. Suetonius, meanwhile, regrouped his forces and despite being heavily outnumbered, decisively defeated the Britons. According to Cassius Deo, the rebels numbered between 230 and 300,000. Boudicca's army was crushed. The location of the battle isn't certain, but most historians think it was in the Midlands, probably along the Roman road between Londinium and Viraconium, which became the Anglo-Saxon Watling Street and subsequently the A5. Boudicca then either killed herself to avoid capture, according to Tacitus, or died of illness, according to Cassius Deo. No historical records tell what happened to Boudicca's two daughters. Interest in these events was revived in the English Renaissance and led to Boudicca's fame in the Victorian era. Boudicca has remained an important cultural symbol in the United Kingdom. Boudicca was adopted by the suffragettes as one of the symbols of the campaign for women's suffrage. Boadicea was another name that she was known by. In 1908, a Boadicea banner was carried in several National Union of Women's Suffrage Society marches. A 36-mile long-distance footpath called Boudicca's Way passes through the countryside between Norwich and Dis in Norfolk. We hope you enjoyed this step back into history. If you did, why not hit like and subscribe for more videos from the Brick Girls.